and we're stalling very weirdly. What in the... What is going on now? Okay, something is seriously... Well, we're going full power. We're, what in the world... Huh? Now, on the channel, we've played practically any flight sim. FSX, X-Plane, Mobile Ones, Aerofly. But we have never played one special flight simulator, the Prepared 3D, which was made by Lockheed Martin, who also make airplanes. So they must be good at making flight sims, you think? Well, the problem is that Prepared 3D is kind of dead now. They used to have a huge community. But the day the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 came out, it all died. And today we're going to find out why the Lockheed Martin P3D isn't as popular anymore, even though they're still making these. I mean, just in 2023, the new P3D version 6 was released. And this is the one I bought for $60 in the personal license. And this is the one I downloaded. But what I haven't done is download any add-ons at all, which will become problematic for us now. Because Prepared 3D is sort of like an empty framework, an empty flight sim that definitely requires add-ons in order to be any modern and good. All right, so welcome to the menu screen. Right now we see this F-35 just floating around and you can already see the focus of P3D. It's obviously made by a military company and so rather cares about military things. But we can go into vehicle and check out other vehicles. The biggest plane that I can find is the C-130. But other than that, it's really mostly military. And for some reason, even a deep sea submarine. I wonder if it has a PlayStation controller that is like, or like I don't know what you're supposed to do that uh, with. And this right here is another submarine, the Ohio class. So we're literally down in Ohio with this one. Anyway, there are some civilian airplanes like the Mooney Bravo, which we're going to use now, I guess. But you know, in order to get any airliners, you'll definitely have to buy add-ons. Let's go ahead and just press OK and choose the airport. Now, luckily, we do have worldwide flying in probably what is the worst ever like map. Like this looks like from 2002 and a half. Like, yeah, we see airspaces, but look at this aircraft icon. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Uh, but come on, let's go ahead and pick an airport and just take a look at it. For example, Princess Juliana International. Yes, the Caribbean airport in on a Netherlandish island, which according to P3D is in Andorra. That makes any sense. Andorra, the small country between Spain and France. I don't know, this island has nothing to do with Andorra. Why is it that? Okay, anyway. Here we can pick a location. We can spawn on a gate, but let's spawn on a ramp GA. We can select weather here and time, but let's just go ahead and press OK. And so welcome to the ramp of Princess Juliana Airport. And what I will say is that this actually doesn't look super bad. I expected this to look like genuine FSX quality. That would kind of look like this or maybe like this, not really good, so that you would have to mod it in order for it to look something like this. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, like the empty framework, which you have to, you know, install loads of sceneries and aircraft and like shading mods too to make it look good. That's, I guess, how it used to be. Now with the relatively new V6, it doesn't look all that bad. We even have a little bit of like satellite scenery. Once again, we are now spawned into this moony airplane. Here we can circle around the views and you'll notice that this uh, P3D very much reminds of FSX because it kind of is the like the framework of FSX. It's kind of the same thing, but like modified and a little bit better for sure. I mean, look at the graphics here in the cockpit. It really isn't the worst. You can tell that the screen, the G1000 panel is doesn't have any like glass kind of reflections. Like for example, modern flight sims like X-Plane that actually has like good lighting models and stuff. But still, this is definitely usable. Now this airplane is already turned on and I've got my joystick connected. So let's go ahead and release the parking brake right now and just start going. Come on. Yeah, look at that. Now, why does Lockheed Martin even still make P3D now that the consumer market is pretty much, you know, eaten up by flight sims that look a lot better? Well, it's kind of more like a training software. So I guess they might not even care about the fact that normal people are not downloading it to con their computer anymore. Like the thing is, for example, with P3D is that you can get a professional plus license for actual like flight school training or even military training. You know, chances are North Korea might might use P3D to train their pilots. 
Is it cold in the flights? Why are they wearing a jacket? Anyway, you know, in comparison, the modern Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 or the even the 24 don't have a professional license at all. Yes, there's no way for a flight school to legally be able to operate Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 for some reason. They just never sold that, which is the reason why when you're, for example, in like a full motion flight sim, it, there's a very slim and very illegal chance that the modern Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 might be running on it. If you see it, report it to the police. Either way, this is what Prince Diana looks like. And once again, it's sort of usable. You definitely won't be able to like fool anyone. So that's kind of a problem, but let's go ahead and um, take off with a Mooney. So here we go. We're giving in full speed and this is all like in full realism mode. And honestly, I would, I'm, I'm like not doing anything right now. I expect the inertia from the engine to get our plane yawing to the left a little bit more to do right rudder. You know what I mean? So what I'm trying to do is kind of figure out the the uh, physics. Either way, we've taken off. We can see sound. That sounds okay. Could be a truck. Anyway, down here is the beach of Maho, which doesn't really look all that well, but we can actually see that there is satellite scenery. They're really trying. Let's go ahead and put the landing gear up right now, which works as you can see. And I do have to say like the animations and stuff, in terms of what the texturing can do is pretty good. But let's go ahead and let maybe check out the physics. How does this plane fly? Does it fly convincingly good? Apparently the physics are a lot better than FSX. So let me try to see if we can fly this plane upside down. Sort of. Um, wow, this plane flies amazingly upside down, although it probably has a very asymmetrical wing, which shouldn't allow us to do that. Also, at this point, after like, what, 20 seconds, this Mooney's gravity-driven oil pump should fail because we're upside down, and gravity isn't really doing its job, and the engine should actually die now. It's not doing that, so, uh, wonderful. We can... Maybe the physics aren't that good. Like, oh, look at what I'm able to pull off now. Okay. Yeah. Well, who am I to judge? I have never flown a Mooney in real life. Maybe you can fly like that. Also, crashing just brings you back into the air, just like FSX. But I do have to say, the clouds look kind of nice. And I think the reflections on the water looks kind of nice, too. This is definitely, like, usable graphics, which is definitely acceptable. Especially if you were, if it was 2015, then it would be... That would be great. Let me try another vehicle before we actually buy an airliner. We will do that. Let's maybe try a C-130 right now. Let's maybe go to an airport that's pretty hard to pull off in the flight sims, to be honest. Everybody call Chevelle. It looks definitely usable in the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, which came out three years before this. All right, so welcome to Coach Chevelle, which... Honestly, I, I kind of expected this to look a little bit worse. Well, this is not... Well, at least they got the runway slope sort of right. And this looks... Oh, this looks okay. I mean, it's okay. I mean, I, I paid 60 bucks for this. Maybe it's not okay. But anyway, let's get into the cockpit now. This is the C-130, which is included in P3D. And actually, uh, the cockpit doesn't even look that good. It's already turned on. And I couldn't find the option to turn to get into the airplane with cold and dark. But it, it's kind of useful because I can't even, like, see what it's trying to say. Engine bleed air valves. Yeah, this kind of feels like watching Japanese... Um, Anyway, but all right, let's see if this plane flies. The Triple Five engine sounds okay. Let's go ahead and move it. All right, C-130. For some reason, there is a magical item floating right here for no reason. That is a lot of fun. Let's go. Uh... Oh, well, look, we've got a weapon. All right, let's go take off. Full power into the turboprop engines. You're a C-130. You should be able to handle it. So full power now. You can do it. I don't know why there is a mountain here. This feels like kind of like a ramp, which is a bit crazy. And, uh... Yeah, that's worked perfectly fine. Whoa, we've just crashed through the 3D trees and we're stalling very weirdly. What in the... What is going on now? Um, this is kind of like a ballet C-130 now. Let's maybe try something else. Uh, LaGuardia. Let's see New York, you know. Now look at a, I mean, th a kind of nice looking New York, I gotta say. Is that the Hudson Bridge, some sort? Is that bridge real? That looks insane. That is a sine wave. But we can look, that is New York over there. And my frames per second are crazy. Oh, hey, we've got a proper New York scenery. You know, the scenery really isn't the bad 
thing i think if they like improved on the lighting so it's not as contrasty i forget the shadows for example are way too black like it definitely wouldn't be bad oh my god my poor little computer but all right let's maybe talk about some proper airplanes how about we buy some add-ons now lots of modern day microsoft flight simulator ad developers for example started off with p3d like for example pmdg they had this ultra realistic 737 nothing would actually come close to it and it definitely can compare in terms of realism to modern day flight sims that's what i'm trying to say like p3d really had a lot of potential if you put a lot of makeup on it problem is it's kind of hard to like get pmdg planes for p3d they don't even have it on their store website anymore luckily the developer of tfdi designs though for example has their md11 for the microsoft flight sim 2020 and prepare 3d so let's go ahead and take a look at that one and the very interesting thing about this plane for example is that i bought it for the microsoft flight sim and so it's also available for p3d which is really nice so let's go ahead and install it uh see how good that is and you know i'm not trying to like you know have a p3d slander if you installed add-ons it could be actually a really good looking flight sim which obviously became obsolete with microsoft flight sim 2020 which had these looks out of the box so you didn't have to buy or pirate uh all these aircraft and sceneries and you really have to spend hundred dollars to make it look good global building terra flora including hundreds of gigabytes as well all obsolete with the new flight sim all right installation complete easy enough and so here it is finally a airliner let's maybe try my local airport frankfurt just see how that looks like just spawn on a random gate very good <laughs> Okay. Um, and it crashed, ladies and gentlemen. Let's try that again. Hey, there we go. And we've got a graphics warning issue. Okay. And it's crashed again. Maybe the idea of putting the, you know, the graphics to ultra crazy daisy it wasn't that good. So let's maybe tone it down a little bit just to make sure my computer doesn't die. Um, so it turns out maybe the optimization isn't the best, but let's take a look. And it's crashed again. Maybe let's try an airport that isn't as well, busy, I guess. It might be the scenery as well. Key West International it is. Let's try that out. All right, and so welcome aboard the MD-11. This finally worked out. For some reason, our engines are spinning, although they should definitely not. Yeah, this is a great model now. And this is kind of like the thing. P3D was just a way better FSX back then. And there were tons of add-ons that were really good, like this plane. Look at this. And look at the cockpit right here. We can go through the EFB, connect and disconnect loads of things. Turn on the battery. Yeah, look at that. Turn on the APU, which is hiding over there. Press start on that. And now we have a really, really good add-on. Look at the model of cars. Very uh, 2023, isn't it? Great. We can definitely hear the APU start up. That is a good view. And look at how dirty this plane is. Autopilot. Shut up. Let's get this thing into nav mode. Yes, wonderful. Shut up. Yet again. Yeah, this is a great aircraft. And as you can see, using VATSIM and such, you can have A cars, you can have a flight plan from Key West to Miami. And as you can see, we have a nav database that works. If you install add-ons, this looks totally fine. It's just that I find the cockpit extremely dark. Holy moly. Either way, let's get the APU bleed working. And so we can turn on those engines. Engine ignition mode A and B. Okay. Uh, like that and we can press this and yes as you can see the engine number three is starting to start up it sounds a little bit horrible like a construction site i don't know why that is but look at the screen right here this looks okay this isn't the worst now let's uh let's just go and fly this thing i want to i want to see it fly let's release the parking brake come on you can do it now once again optimization looks uh, not too good we have a lot of lag for not a lot of graphics so that is great what i do say is that this plane for example taxis a lot nicer than like modern microsoft flight sim like look at the brake action i really like this this plane feels a lot heavier now than what we know from modern flight sims, you know? Because I feel like in the Microsoft flight sim, sometimes planes fly like toys. All right, let's taxi this plane poorly onto the runway. Don't worry about anything here. This is good. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and take off. We can hear some beautiful sounds. And yet again, this plane feels quite nice to operate. Now, 80 knots, 100 knots. And we can soon uh, lift off out of here. Wonderful. That's worked brilliantly. Let's go and bring out the landing gear to take a look at that. 
Yeah, perfect. Not a bad look at all. Now, let's quickly put the landing gear back down again because I finally want to see what the landing dynamics are. So what I'll do is I'll bring up the flaps to the max. Come on. How do I do that? Oh, yeah. There we go. Don't That's the way sink. to pull it off. Shut up. No, don't sink. Don't sink. Pull okay, up. something pull is seriously... Up. We're going full power. What in the world? Huh? Up. Huh? Pull up. Don't what was that? Why did we just Don't fall sink. out of the skies? Sink this rate. is weird. I don't know. Maybe we have a little bit of bugs here. I don't know what's going on. I'm right, going to try that again. Spawning into midair, which I have to select myself. There's no, like, approach here. Wonderful. Let's try that again. Thank All right. You. Let's try this again. We've Don't spawned sink. into an approach. Uh, this is sink. looking okay. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do a landing now. And I do have to say, as Don't long as sink. the plane doesn't, like, break and Don't fall out of the sink. sky, I feel like it flies Don't quite sink. immersively. Let's go ahead and see Don't if we can do, a look, like, a smooth landing. Don't Shut up. Don't You're sink. okay. Sink. Don't sink. Good. And what they've got managed to capture was Don't actually uh, the Don't very sink. horrible GPWS callouts. Sh Don't shut sink. up. Don't sink. Don't Good. Sink. I can't. Oh my god. What? Is what? This is kind of weird. What happened is we stalled out, and when that happens, the plane just has no stall behavior at all. It just kind of falls out of the sky like we did here. Like, I genuinely don't know what happened. Like, look what, how we just fell. What? And we didn't get a stall alert either. Mm, this crashed. Device hung. Good for the device. Um, okay, let's try again, but with a, you know, with a good landing now. 100. Shh, oh, the woman is so 50, apathetic. 40, 30, 20, 10. Good. Ah, and I like that flare. The feeling of that flare is actually quite nice. Now, how do I do reverse thrust? Huh? Uh, oh yeah, this is reverse shot. Look at that. We have just landed, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and we're stopping as well. Wonderful. Good luck. So everybody, can you still use P3D in the Big 25? I reckon so. It definitely still works. The physics are a bit weird and it's broken a little bit. But it doesn't look that bad. It, it doesn't feel that bad. But there's obviously a lot of reasons why no consumer would buy this now. Why would you? So this is the consumer-oriented fall-off of P3D. Yet you will still find it in professional environments for a long time. So everybody, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters. <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.